Hey, welcome back to our idle game tutorial series. In this episode, we will be looking at how to upgrade the data system we're using so that it is a little bit more viable, scalable for future save and load system, as well as being accessible from various areas of the game where it has to be uh, accessed, right? Because right now uh, we have two different prototypes and both prototypes have their own data, which is uh, completely independent. Um, on the same time, our little label here, which is supposed to tell us how much resource we have, doesn't work. It's not connected. So we will be making a singleton that will allow us to get access to the data from anywhere, right? So let's start by creating a new scene, just as usual. But this time we will create a regular gray node, right? No, no color, just a regular node. And I'm going to name this node game. All right. I will save it into its own folder. Let's see, game folder in there, game tscn, perfect. And create a script right away. All right. So we have a basic node, which we will name game, like this. And I will describe this as the main node of the game, right? That's simplest way to describe it. And I want to make this a single instance node, all right? So this comes from in, in the form of having a reference, an instance, which is going to be unique, okay? And to make a unique variable, we are going to use the keyword static. Static which says all the instances of this class will share the same variable. So by creating a variable ref, reference, which is static, there will be only one value to this variable. So I'm going to type this reference to the same type as the class. And now I can use the enter tree function to make a simple check if not ref i'm going to use i'm going to assign myself to ref and i'm going to return otherwise i will destroy myself because if there is already one instance of game right which is if ref which is the else um, I don't want to exist because it doesn't make sense. Only one should exist. Okay, so that's going to be our singleton reference. And this is going to be our singleton check. All right. So now we have a node which can be accessed from anywhere in the game by getting the ref since it is static. So what we're gonna do is simply create a new variable, which is gonna be a variable data, okay? But we haven't created data yet, so we will just do this, this right away. In the scripts folder, which we have never used so far, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna create a data folder and create not a scene. I'm gonna create a data script like this. All right. So let's rename our new class to data and we're gonna extend resource, All right? This will contain data to save and load. 
At the moment, we only have one variable in our game, which is Stardust. So we're gonna declare this by using the tag export, which will be useful later on for saving and loading. So we're gonna export the variable Stardust, which is an int equal to zero. So if we start the game, the data will be initialized to zero at the moment. And that will be the current amount of Stardust available. Right. So let's go back to the game script. In this script, we can now create our new variable data. Okay. And we need to initialize it. Just to make sure that nothing bad happens later, we're just going to initialize this variable in the enter tree function. So we're, we're going to check if we have this singleton here. And maybe I will actually, hmm, I will rename this singleton check and leave it at the top and have the actual functioning of the class under it. We're gonna have enter tree, we're gonna have the single term check, all right? And then we're gonna create a new data, data equal data dot new. All right, there we go. So let's document these things. And data is save, um, well, contains the data to save and load, All right? And this, that's well, singleton check and data initialization. initialization. There we go. So we have our game node which has a data variable which is initialized when it enters the tree. So now, all we need to do is to plug the game as a child of this node, which is kind of a ghost node really because it doesn't do anything on the screen, it's just scripts. So we're just gonna take the user interface and put it there, all right? So now we have a place to store the data, but we actually don't access this place. So let's go back to our prototypes. Um, let's start with the um, Prototype clicker, okay. So we just need to change how we're gonna create Stardust and how we're going to read Stardust. So reading Stardust, so creating, yeah, creating. Instead of just using this variable right there, we're gonna remove it and have a few errors like this. And instead, we will use the game.reference and have access to data now, which allow us to access a new Stardust variable, which we're gonna upgrade. And we're gonna do exactly the same right there. Game.ref.data.stardust. There we go. We want to create Stardust, okay, okay. There's a little problem though. Because now data can be changed from pretty much anywhere in the game, at the moment it's hard to tell when we have to update the label. We will make 
in another episode a resource handler which help us deal with this problem but in the meantime we will use a sort of patch thing which isn't optimal but will allow the game to work with the new data system without breaking and that's the most important at the moment so we're going to use the process function without any need for delta right and what we're going to do basically is every frame because that's what this function does it's called every frame what we will do is update the label all the time even though there's no new thing to display we will still update it and that's it so we're just gonna update label and there we go this is a temporary function to update the label right let's go to the prototype generator in there and do the same we're going to remove the starters here we're going to remove the update label here and we're going to use the new reference to data to have this right game dot ref dot data dot starters right and again we will want to have a process function process there we go and update label every frame there we go temporary function temporary function to update the label All right now we have to add some script to our little label here so that it also receives the information. So I believe it's this one. Yes, let's rename it Stardust Label. And create a new script. Well, where will we put this script? Well, I will leave it in this folder at the moment. Um, Stardust Label, right? And we're gonna create last name, um, label starters actually, and displays the current amount of starters available. Right. So we're gonna create an update function, update text void function. And we're going to have the process function, which will update the text every frame. So we want to update the text and have the text equal to stardust, colon, percent s, and game, dot ref, dot data, dot stardust. There we go. Here, updates the text to reflect the current amount of Stardust. And here, that's going to be a temporary function to update the text. There we go. So now we actually have created a singleton that is used by pretty much any component in the game. So running a scene that uses this singleton, this data, while it is not in the game, doesn't work. Okay. So what we're going to do is go to the project settings into the run 
settings and select a main scene for the game, which will be the scene game, right? At the moment, uh, everything is contained in there, right? That's the scene game, we can see. We have both views we have created and that's what we want. So we're just gonna use the run project button now and there we go. So we have zero stardust pretty much everywhere. We're gonna start generating stardust and now we can see that both label are watching the same value. And I can also go into the clicker here and click to create stardust faster, right? Well, that's it. <laughs> that's it for uh, this quick data refactoring. What we can do to make this a little bit smoother is to create now a resource handler to manage uh, Stardust creation, Stardust consumption, and to notify nodes that Stardust value has changed, requiring an update on the display, right? So that's it for this episode. I hope you liked it, and I will see you in the next one.